So, yeah, thanks for uh, inviting me, Flanders EC, in this uh, beautiful venue. Uh, my name is uh, Driese Porter. I'm an artist working with technology, and I'm from Belgium. I'm from Ghent. So, uh, most of my work is about uh, surveillance, privacy, social media, machine learning, and I make them in all kinds of forms, apps, installations, websites. Uh, and in this presentation, we, I will present my work that I've done in the last years, but also like kind of small uh, experiments. Uh, I have um, a background in electronics. I studied, I went to an art school. Uh, I studied media arts in uh, Ghent. And I also worked two years for uh, advertising for, as a concept provider. Uh, someone that comes up uh, with ideas for the clients. So uh, yeah, but this presentation will mainly uh, be my uh, artistic work. So this is one of my first works that I ever created. It's called 24hoursoundwave.com, and it's uh, a website. And before I made this website, I was wearing a, a sound recorder, and it recorded my whole day. It recorded conversations with my, with my friends, with my mom. Uh, also that day, I went to a party. So uh, I had this audio file of 24 hours, and I placed it on this website, 24 hours sound soundwave.com, and you can listen back to the whole file, the 24 hours. But some parts are deleted. Uh, that private conversation with my mom, uh, that gossip that I was talking to, to, to my best friend, I deleted those parts, and you can't listen back to the website, but you can buy them. Uh, and the price you pay for each part is based on the amount, it's not based on the length, but it's based on the amount of value I give, the amount of privacy I give it to. So I have files from five euro to more than 250 euro. So this was really an experiment around myself, uh, sharing private information uh, around, yeah, around myself. But then later I was in art school and I made, at the end of the art school, I made a project and it's called Tinder In. Uh, and Tinderin exists out of 10 photo frames, and each photo frame uh, exists out of two profile pictures, uh, and two profile pictures of the same person. Uh, it's one from LinkedIn, and the other one is from Tinder. So I place this, I put 10 people in photo frames. Uh, actually, today I'm not able to show them all because of legal reasons. Also, I published them unblurred, and I didn't ask for permission. So I launched this, I published this on my website, on my social media, and the project went viral. It was on the Washington Post, it was on Vice, it was everywhere. Also, lawyers did, uh, did articles about it, like, uh, there was one lawyer agency, and I was saying, like, this is illegal. And there was one uh, lawyer agency, this is legal. Uh, and, yeah, some people found out about this, uh, those pictures that I published. Uh, so, for example, of course, I took the really the, con the most contrasted. So I had this, uh, like, girl in bikini, and then there was sued up uh, next to each other. Um, so I placed this uh, on my website, and then actually one of my favorite articles about the project was in uh, the newspaper Metro in Belgium, and they write about the project, and they uh, published uh, also a profile picture of me without asking permission. So I thought that tells a lot about the whole thing that I did. So this was in 2015, and then in 2016, LG launched this print campaign. Uh, it's they, like they stole the concept. Uh, the design is exactly the same. It's to promote uh, their new smartphone. Actually, those it's those are stock image photos. Uh, and and uh, yeah, they, they won a few advertising prizes with this. And this is a credit list. So nobody, I'm not in. It's a long list, but I'm not part of it. So I thought, like by myself, I had to do something. Just, just stole, stole my concept, uh, and I was thinking, and I sent them an invoice of 10,000 euro to use my ID. Uh, the company is called GNR. Uh, so I sent them an invoice, 10,000 euro, um, and uh, they didn't pay me. They uh, didn't pay the invoice. Uh, but then a week later, they uh, blocked me, the creative director of this agency blocked me on social media. So in a way, it, it, they reacted it. 
after this project, after the Tinder In project, I had uh, a lot of people like were, were watching my website and checking my other project I've done. And I got like opportunities. Uh, creators contacted me, uh, exhibitions, festivals, uh, uh, contacted me and asked me like, hey, can you make new work? We have this exhibition about privacy. Uh, do you have new ideas? We want to support you. We want to make new work. Uh, at the time, I was really into unprotected surveillance cameras. Those are cameras that are connected to the internet and uh, don't have a password to them. So they, it's, I'm not talking about the camera uh, in your computer. I'm talking about the camera, uh, like security cameras, cameras in your living room. Uh, I did a little research about Antwerp and I found something. I found two cameras. Wait. <laughs> this is for... Uh, So I found two cameras. This is real time uh, somewhere in Antwerp. The frame rate is pretty low, but uh, if someone recognizes this place, let me know. But it's somewhere in Ant. You recognize it? Where is it exactly? Okay, end of the Nationale Straat. So this is Mechel Sustenach. Okay, so this is real time. So we probably it's like it can be like a doorbell. It can be a camera. Um, someone that didn't really well secure the camera. Uh, and there, I found another one. This is also in Antwerp. This is in someone's garden, I guess, uh, protecting the house. Uh, also, oh, we, we have this person that we can watch. So this is all real time. Um, so I was really into those cameras and I use them in a lot of projects. Uh, and the first project I've done is called Jaywalking. And jaywalking is an interactive installation, uh, and it looks like this. Uh, and it exists out of three screens, three uh, emergency buttons, and on the three sc screens, you see live surveillance cameras pointed to crossroads. Uh, and I made software to detect if people are jaywalking. By the way, jaywalking means when you cross a road, when it's red light, and in a lot of countries, that's illegal. So this is jaywalking, three screens, on the three screens you see uh, live surveillance cameras pointed to crossroads. I didn't place them there, I just uh, get, uh, get access to those cameras. They're, all, they're also in three different countries. Um, and I made software to detect if people are jaywalking. And if, if the computers find a jaywalker, the visitor of the, um, of the art piece get this question, would you like to report the jaywalker? If the visitor then presses the emergency button, the system sends an email to the closest police station around the location of the, <laughs> of the camera with an image of the jaywalker. And the email looks like this. Hi, somebody just jaywalked at then the address of the camera, bye. And an attachment you have the, um, the image of the, of the jaywalker. And it's sent with an email address that only exists for 10 minutes. Last year, I made like a following project on this, and it's a wall of 22 meters, and it exists out of more than 1,000 photo frames of people that are jaywalking from all over the world. Uh, they're all unique, they're captured with my software, and people in exhibitions can buy those photo frames. And the price you pay for each photo frame is the same as the fine in that country. So uh, this time, the money doesn't go to the police, it goes to me as an artist. So we have prizes from I guess 20 euro to, to also more than 500 euro. Uh, so this is a bit how the software works. I'm a really uh, big fan of Python. That's a programming language, it's super easy. And you see like their software checking the traffic like the main color, and then if it's red, it checks if someone is crossing the road. I also make this open source so people can, uh, can, uh, can test it. Also uh, in that, period, I made Seattle crime camps, and it looks like this. I found out Seattle has uh, a lot of uh, open cameras uh, on the streets, uh, and they have like a big uh, open data platform, and the police is sharing the location where the police is going to. And what this installation is trying to show you, it's trying to, it tries to show you a real-time crime in Seattle. 
So it checks where the police is going to, and then it will show you the closest uh, live uh, cameras. You will also hear a live police radio. And then if there's a new incoming police call, it will show you new cameras. Uh, here at uh, this place on the left, I have a, uh, an installation. You can check it out after this uh, presentation. It's called Surveillance uh, Speaker, and it looks like this. It's a speaker and uh, um, a camera mounted to each other, and they, uh, it can move, it rotates, it checks the space. And out of the speaker, you hear sentences what the camera sees. And for example, this was in an exhibition, uh, and it was one of the, a great moment it had like it was checking the space and there was a twin walking around and the camera t uh, was pointed to the twin and was saying like i see a girl taking a selfie in the mirror uh, i thought it was really beautiful it makes sometimes mistakes but i always update it on the latest uh, computer vision software um, another piece about those open cameras, I found out, it's called surveillance uh, paparazzi. And this was like the starting point. Microsoft has a, a service where you can send an image and then it will, s uh, you send an image and then it will say like, uh, this is Britney Spears. It can recognize more than 200,000 celebrities. And I was like, okay, why, why is this service necessary in the world? So... I made this, it's called Surveillance Paparazzi, and it's actually like a software that tries to find celebrities in uh, surveillance cameras. Um, this is a small video, and it's constantly, one screen is constantly showing the process of checking all these cameras, and then there's uh, one screen showing the results. And for this work, I selected cameras that are really close, so in barbershops, in, in, uh, like where faces are really clear to, to see. So this is called surveillance paparazzi. It found some results. Um, this is actually my favorite result. Uh, so if it, show, if it finds a result in the installation, it will show you text uh, from Wikipedia, also an image from Wikipedia. And uh, it founds every day one result, but it's like a lookalike. It didn't found a real celebrity. Uh, but that's like my goal. Two days ago, ago I, made, uh, I finished uh, my latest project, and it's called Michael. It's together with my sister. She has a project, I don't have really good documentation about this, but she has a, she has a project where she's trying to find a guy, and it's called Michael in the US. And I made a project, this is like two days ago, I just installed it. It it's, uses the same software as Surveillance Paparazzi, but it checks all location where Michael went a lot, uh, and it's constantly searching for Michael. Um, this is like a small video before I left the exhibition, before I installed, and this is part of uh, my sister's solo exhibition. Uh, so those are like really serious projects about surveillance, about uh, privacy, but I also make a lot of projects on the internet, and it actually started with punchmonet.gallery, a browser game that I made with some friends. In 2012, Andrew Shannon seriously damaged a Claude Monet masterpiece hanging in the National Gallery of Ireland by punching it in front of stunned art lovers. In December 2014, the story made international headlines again as he was sentenced to five years in prison for his actions. This shocking act of violence drew mixed reactions on the internet. While most agreed that attacks on artwork were terrible, some felt strangely attracted to this surprising and unusual incident. We have to admit, we shared this fascination. Introducing Punchamonet.gallery, a browser-based 3D game where you can virtually punch a Monet painting. Visitors find themselves in a gallery space similar to the National Gallery of Ireland. Players are given two controls, moving and punching, so they can walk up to the virtual Monet and punch it until it's completely destroyed. As the painting is repeatedly punched, a running tally adds up the dollar value of the damage being done. The simulation clearly struck a nerve on the internet. Tens of thousands of people chose to experiment with violence against art, resulting in a total of 200,000 players after the first week. More than 50,000 people shared the project on social media. For some, virtually punching a priceless artwork was cathartic, a chance to explore a taboo behavior without doing any real damage. 
The project was featured on a number of important creative and art outlets, and by prominent gaming websites such as Kotaku, Killscreen, and Game Trailers. Try it now at punchmonet.gallery. So I made this game and I was super surprised. We had a lot of like visitors uh, and I start making a lot of browser games and games and online projects. One of them, we were really short about this one, it's called Airbnb Host.online. And it's a browser game using Airbnb data. It's not really legally, but uh, it's a game showing you one image of an Airbnb space, and then you need to guess the owner of the place. And it all uses data from Airbnb. We didn't scrape, we didn't save any data. It's all coming from Airbnb servers. Sometimes I spend like half an hour on projects, like this one, it's called non-views, and it's a browser uh, extension, and it changes the amount of YouTube views in this. It changes the amount of people that didn't watch the YouTube video in the world. So it checks the amount of people in the world. Some websites are doing an estimation about this, minus the people uh, uh, that watched the movie. Uh, also, it's, this started as an online project. It's called Scratchy Kit. I have it here with me today. And it's a Scratchy Kit where you can win up to 25,000 fake followers for your Instagram and Twitter account. Um, so it works. Uh, we will go back later into this. But it actually works. You can win up to 25,000 fake followers. If you win something, you see the amount, you see a unique code, and you need to fill in your username and a website. So I made this, started in my web shop, and then uh, exhibitions, festivals asked me to show this in a physical space, so I made this. Now we have three in Europe, so it's a machine selling those scratch tickets. And this is inside, this is in a, in a venue, uh, and this is my web shop. A few months ago I made a new project, like also a following project, and it's called, called uh, Quick Fix. And I also made a small video about this. Quick Fix is an art installation that makes it possible to buy likes or followers in just a few seconds. This is how it works. Choose your product. Pay the cost. Enter your Instagram username and you're done. You will have the likes or followers delivered in just a few seconds. Check your phone and start celebrating success. Quick fix. Influencers love it. So this was like more like instant. I love that people can just try it in exhibition and uh, experience how easy it is. So this is a few pictures. This was recently showed in Hong Kong, in Europe, uh, and, and, and in San Francisco. This is also in my working space. I had to place this in my presentation. This is my case. Normally I don't make a lot of cases for my work and they get destroyed on the way of the exhibition. But now I spent time on, on this case, so I'm super proud about this case. <laughs> I need to show it. This is a bit inside. I love to work with Raspberry Pis. So that's an amazing tool. Uh, this is inside, like a debug. And I also keep a database of all the orders. So recently it was in Europe, Hong Kong, and in San Francisco. And what I saw is that like, people in Europe are like, hey, we're going to test it, 100 likes. OK, cool, it works. Wow, amazing. And then in, 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 in San Francisco, they test it, but then they come back with $20 to spend uh, all the budget on uh, followers. So that was really cool to see. So let's try it today. Who wants 1,000 Instagram likes now and wants to type their username on stage? Just now, on a post. OK, can you come to the, on stage and type your uh, username? So I made a little tool um, to show this in uh, presentations. Um, this is a tool. You want likes. I want 1,000. Now I just need a link to the posts. Do you have a private account? OK. Just type in your, it's an uh, Azerty keyboard. Yeah, that's that's you. And now you want your uh, which one? Want you? It's a video. Uh, this one. This looks amazing. Thousand. You can also be less if you want. Thousand. Okay, the internet is not really good. Okay, uh, I'll close the cameras. Are you sure? Uh, now we just have to wait. Maybe you come back later. Um, 
So you had 20. Now I'm refreshing. It will maybe take one or two minutes, uh, but you will have them at the end. Um, it takes some time. That's normal. OK, otherwise, I will present the next project, and then we can come back. But uh, still 20. OK, I will come back later to this. Don't worry. Um, also, one of my first apps is called Die With Me. And Die With Me is an app for Android and iPhone. And you can only use it when you have less than 5% battery on your phone. If you have less than 5% battery on your phone, you can start using Die With Me and chat to other people having less than 5% battery on their phone. <laughs> so this is called Die With Me. Uh, and I also made a small video about this. Everyone knows the struggle of a dying phone. Die With Me is an app you can only use when you have less than 5% battery. Die together in a chat room on your way to offline peace. Die With Me is now available in the wow. Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. I've got to tell, I made this together with a friend, David Supranat. Uh, let's go back to the post first. I'm refreshing. Okay, let me try something else. This was actually a backup tool. Let's do 500. Okay, now we come back later. Okay, so start counting up. <laughs> We will come back later. So this was Die With Me. And actually, we had a lot of problems to get it approved in the Apple App Store. Like if Apple checks every concept, all the code, and they really didn't like the concept. It was too limited. But we get it approved, and it went immediately viral. We were on a lot of websites, and a lot of people shared the project. And we won a few awards with this, and then Suddenly, we were the number one in the Apple App Store uh, in the US for more than two weeks. Uh, so this happened. I was really happy with this. Um, and then people, starting to, people and companies starting to copy us, our app. This was the first copy. It's called Die With Me in the Play Store. It has exactly the same name. It's a free app. Our app is one, one, one euro app. So this was a copy. And I was like a bit like feel weird about this. And I was sending this guy an email like, hey, a really serious email. Hey, uh, can you please bring it down 24 hours? Otherwise, I'll send you my legal team. I don't have a legal team. It just sounds really professional. So this guy didn't reply, uh, but he changed it from die with me to live with me. Uh, and then the other day, there was a new uh, copy. It's called die with me, less than 15%. Then this was the first one in the Apple App Store. It's called Last Date. It's a mix between Tinder and Die With Me. So a lot of people, uh, and this is a live with me, a guy from London. It's a chat app that you can only use when you have more than 95% battery on your phone. Uh, so, and I keep track on all the copies. Um, so yeah, this is uh, Die With Me. Um, let's go back to the post. OK, here we go. <laughs> You can check. This is not something that happened in my browser. It's, uh, you can check it on Instagram. Uh, this is the account. And you can start following it. Uh, so it will uh, go up. I will make sure it has more than 1,000 likes today. So it will slowly go up. OK. And um, a bit going over time, but uh, let's finish it off with something else. So in exhibitions, by the way, I show this as a neon lamp, because I think an app showing an app in an exhibition is kind of weird. It's a neon lamp showing the chat room uh, all the time in, um, uh, in the exhibition. 
To finish off the presentation, I will talk about three projects that I'm working on. One is a fail project that I didn't make last year, but I still want to make it. It's called inverted flag, and it's a flag outside surrounded with nine other flags, and this flag is going against the wind. Um, then it's this one, meditation charts. It's a, char it's a space where you can chill, hang out, charge your phone, but you need to close your eyes, and then uh, your phone will charge. Uh, so it's like charge yourself and your phone at the same time. Uh, and then to finish off, I'm working on my first product. It's called Short Life. And Short Life is a kind of a clock. It looks like this. This is the prototype. And it shows one number. It shows the uh, amount of percentage of your life that is already done. So it's based on your health, and it's based on your um, age, and it's based on where you grew up. So it's like, make the best out of your life. And this is next to your bed. So this is short life. <laughs> and then to finish off, I'm currently, I think, more than three years working on this dating website. And it's a dating website where you don't need to fill in anything. So you don't need to fill in your first name, last name. Um, you don't need to upload a profile picture. You just need to upload your browser history. And it will make a match between someone else's browser history. So yeah, thanks for listening. My name is uh, Dries de Poorte.